All right, welcome to Hannity. And tonight, as your mentally vacant president shuffles through the halls of the White House in his maximum stability sneakers, lawyers and bureaucrats in the Democratic Party, they're hard at work. You see, they're determined to get Donald Trump by any means necessary and are using America's system of justice as a political weapon. Now, this is as, well, Oliver Stone says, the new war warfare, which is called lawfare. In Atlanta, where the bogus case against Trump is now in limbo, well, disgraced Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis just appeared on conspiracy theorist extraordinaire Rachel Maddow's show on MSDNC. Why? To blast Trump supporters and Congressman Jim Jordan. Uh, I'm sure that Fonnie Willis has no political bias or ulterior motives. She just wants justice to be served, right? Okay, Chairman Jordan, he will respond tonight straight ahead. Meanwhile, in Florida, where the Biden DOJ is waging its own lawfare war campaign down there against Trump, a shocking new revelation. Pay close attention to this. We now have unsealed court documents that Biden's politicized attorney general, Merrick Garland, at Joe Biden's weaponized DOJ, actually authorized, get this, the use of deadly force during that August 22, 2022 raid at Mar-a-Lago. Quote, law enforcement officers of the Department of Justice may use deadly force when necessary against the former president of our country over a document uh, debate. Really? Let's be clear. The left, they're going to rightly claim this is, well, boilerplate language and standard operating procedure uh, typically used in federal searches. Uh, this was no typical federal search. This was a raid of the private home of a former U.S. president where he lives full time with his son and his wife, the former first lady of the United States, over a document dispute. And while Trump was away during the raid, Secret Service, they were still on location. And so were many other individuals connected to the former president. So why was Merrick Garland prepping for a possible, what, shootout? Why did agents roll up guns at the ready? This was not business as usual. This is a raid at Mar-a-Lago authorized by Joe Biden's DOJ against Joe Biden's chief political rival over a document dispute. Keep in mind, Joe Biden's DOJ charged Trump with the same document-related felonies that Biden was accused of committing for decades by the DOJ inspector general, but he was never charged with any crime. It's like Hillary Clinton, 33,000, deleted email, top secret, classified information on her service, servers, uh, more than Donald Trump. But, of course, no reasonable prosecutor would prosecute, we were told. And, by the way, Biden also never faced a federal raid. He had top-secret classified documents, four separate locations spread out all over the place. Dr. Jill Biden, well, she never had federal agents rifling through her clothes and underwear. No one ever showed up at any of Biden's houses, guns drawn uh, for a surprise uh, search and seizure. This is not equal application of our law. It's not equal justice under the law. It is what we've been warning you about. It's the weaponization of justice in America. Where is the sense of proportionality? We got lectured all the time when Bill Clinton was being uh, impeached. What about proportionality? Really? For a former president? Documents dispute? Okay. Deadly force? Okay. You don't, you don't think that maybe that should have been considered, especially since they allowed uh, Donald Trump had already allowed the FBI into Mar-a-Lago, willingly allowed the FBI into the very room where the, quote, documents were found. As a matter of fact, they could have taken them with them that day. They chose not to. They called back days later. They said, can you put an extra padlock on that one room? They complied with the request of the FBI. All they had to do is say, can we come over? And they would have been let in. Joe was not charged, according to Robert Hur, you might remember, because he would likely come off as a very, very nice but very forgetful old man who was asked, by the way, if he was asking if he was still vice president. Was I still vice president in 2009? That's the year he became vice president. Now, we did reach out to Merrick Garland's DOJ. We've yet to hear back. What a shock. Meanwhile, the FBI told us that the authorization for the use of deadly force was standard, a standard policy statement. I told you they'd say that, rightfully so. That is used for all search warrants, even a U.S. president, over a document dispute. 
That's not overkill? Okay, remember, no one's above the law, right? Unless you're a Democrat. Now, this brings us to another egregious lawfare campaign against Donald Trump, the one going on in New York City. And today, the defense rested in its case, but not before Judge Juan Mershon did his very best to hamstring all of their arguments from the very beginning of this trial. And I said from day one, Donald Trump can't get a fair trial in New York, and he's not gotten a fair trial in New York. Joe Biden, donor judge Mershon, has been against Donald Trump from day one. Now he sees what has happened in his courtroom, and now he's trying to save Bragg's absurd case that has fallen apart against Trump and try and get it over the finish line. And, of course, you know, the only real crime detail during the case involved not Donald Trump, but Michael Cohen, their star witness, stealing tens of thousands of dollars from the Trump organization. They all knew about it, and they never arrested him anyway or charged him. As someone on CNN put it, while Trump was supposedly committing a nebulous Class E felony, he was the victim of a much more serious Class C felony that the prosecution never bothered to charge. Instead, they cho chose to employ a novel legal theory with an unexplained campaign finance violation in order to upcharge a misdemeanor uh, past their statute of limitations into a felony. And Judge Mershon was more than happy to lend a helping hand. In fact, Mershon even blocked testimony from a former FEC chairman that knows the law, you know, who the defense planned to use to clarify the federal election law. Another biased, disgraceful example of nothing but a, a, a Biden donor prejudice judge. He also, spa you know, spared the, with, the, with no, no defense, for, by the way, literally, and got into a fight, basically, with Robert Costello, who has impeccable credentials. The judge sustained one motion after another from the prosecution. Of course, that limited Costello's damning testimony that he knew was coming because he gave it to Congress the week prior against Cohn. And after doing the exact opposite for testimony from the shady witnesses called by the prosecution, and after Costello reacted with a, oh, a sigh and an eye roll or saying, geez, Mershon lost his Adam Schiff, exploded, throwing everybody out of the courtroom, admonishing Costello. Don't roll your eyes. Are you staring me down? The judge screaming just days after doing nothing while porn star Stormy Daniels acted out, let's see, a sex scene from the stand and described talking to dead people. Make no mistake, Judge Mershon is doing now everything he can do to save Alvin Bragg and get Donald Trump. Throw a lifeline after lifeline after lifeline. Don't forget, the devout Democrat not only donated to Biden, his daughter is a political operative, who, a Democratic operative, who reportedly raised millions from this very case. But no recusal from Judge Mershon is no greater dream for this New York Democrat than to impugn Donald Trump. Uh, on X, Mark Levin, the great one, quote, Juan Mershon will go down in history as one of the most appallingly dishonest and disgraceful judges ever. And keep in mind, Juan Mershon was not picked at random. He was hand-selected for his experience in previous anti-Trump cases. He's our judge. This case is not about law and justice. It's about keeping Trump in a courtroom, smearing him in public, hoping for a conviction based solely on politics. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.